story time about how I tried to stick up for this kid on the bus, but it got me suspended. So a little background information, I was 12 and in 7th grade. So it was a Wednesday, and when school ended, I got on the afternoon bus. And there was this boy named Josh that I was friends with. So I went and I sat next to him on the bus. After like five minutes of us waiting for the bus driver to get back on the bus, this boy named Kai that everybody loves for some reason comes over and rips me out of the seat. After that, he sits down next to Josh and starts punching him and screaming at him. So I grab this kid by his book bag, rip him out of the seat, and I sit next to Josh. I put my headphones in, plug in my phone, and this kid grabs the phone, throws it at the front of the bus. And there weren't any adults on the bus at this time because our bus driver was using the bathroom. And I didn't go up and get my phone because I knew that if I moved, this kid was probably going to hurt Josh again. So then this kid starts trying to punch me. So I punch him in the stomach. An adult comes on the bus, finally, like for part two. Part two about how I got suspended for trying to stick up for some kid on the bus. So like I said, this kid is starting to try to punch me. So I punch him in the stomach. Finally, an adult gets on the bus. She yells at us to all sit down. And by the way, all the little fucking 12 year olds had their phones out recording what was happening. So they look at the cameras, they were interviewing some of the kids and Josh's sister comes up to me and I was like, oh shit. Hopefully she's not gonna yell at me. I don't know why she would, but still. She was like, hey, I just wanted to say thank you for sticking up for my brother. So then after a little bit, I hear my name get called on the speaker. Kai, Josh and I were all called down to the office. All of our parents were there. Kai got a three-day suspension, and I got a three-week suspension. Even though I literally had scratches all over my freaking arms, and Kai didn't even have a bruise on him. Well, my mom, being the boss-ass bitch that she is, she told the school that if they went through with my suspension, she would call the news and tell them that my school was letting kids get away with bullying. Story time about why my best friend cut me off. So a little background information, I was 24 and I had a full-time job as a nurse. And I have been best friends with this girl since we were in seventh grade. As soon as she turned 21, she got married, had a kid. And just like any young tragic love story, her boyfriend who was way older than her left her for some girl who just turned 18. So I ended up letting her move in with me. She had too much pride to go back to her mom's house. I ended up kicking her out of my house though because she would have random guys over 24 seven and she would smoke, you know what, in my house. So I had the cops called on me 24 seven because my neighbors could smell it. So fast forward to now she's living with her mom. Her and I got over that fight and she decided that she wanted to go to college. I was so proud of her, but she asked me if I could watch her kid when she had to go into school because she was doing mostly online. So of course I said yes, I wanted her to succeed, like for part two. Part two about why my best friend cut me off. So like I said, she finally decided to go to college. Me being super happy for her, I would watch her kid whenever she would have to go into school. Well, the one night I'm making dinner and her kid's in the living room, I'm in the kitchen and I go into the living room to tell him that dinner is ready. And I see my dog backed up into a corner and him with a fire poker, literally poking my dog. I wouldn't even call it poking. He was pretty much trying to stab my dog. My dog has its ears back. It's shaking with anxiety. So I go over and I rip it out of his hands and I smack his fingers. And I tell him, we do not do that to the dog. Like, what is wrong with you? So my friend comes, picks him up. A few days later, she comes to drop him off again. And she says, hey, can I talk to you? I already knew what it was about, so I was expecting this. She was like, Gavin told me that you hit him last time he was here. And I was like, yeah, he pretty much was stabbing my dog. And then she's like, oh, well, you know, he doesn't mean any harm. He plays with the dogs like that at home. Like, okay, sis, this story time about the girl who left me unconscious in the girl's bathroom. So a little background information. I was pretty young at the time. I was in seventh elf and how I was weird and how nobody liked me. One day she randomly started being nice to me. She sat with me at lunch and her water bottle was empty. And she asked if I needed mine filled up too. Stupidly, I said yes. Well, she ended up putting drugs in my water bottle. After like 20 minutes, I started feeling sick. So I went to the bathroom and I was kneeling over the toilet when everything went black. Well, when I didn't come back from the bathroom, my teacher got worried. So she sent security looking for me. They were banging on my stall. Obviously I was fucking unconscious, so I didn't answer. So then they called the fire department, the police, the ambulance were all there. Like for part, part two about the girl who left me unconscious in the girl's bathroom. So like I said, the fire department was there, the police, the ambulance. They called the fire department because they couldn't get the door off. And when they removed it, it fell on me. So I was injured and unconscious. And just a little background information on this girl who mind you was a literally 11 years old. She had a three criminal record and was recently in prison for five days or juvie, whatever the heck you want to call it because she brought a knife to school and tried to stab some kid who had called her fat the day before. 
Anyways, back to the story. I wake up four days later. My mom's sitting next to me. They put Abby in jail for 13 years for suspicion of attempted murder. And she was kicked out of school. And now I'm homeschooled and failing all my classes. I now have seizures because of the drugs that she gave me. So yeah. Story time about my unhealthy obsession with my ex-boyfriend. So a little background information. I was 18 and in 12th grade. And him and I have been dating for about four years. And it was around Thanksgiving. So it was pretty much college decision time. I got accepted into UCLA and I was really happy because it was super close to home. And my boyfriend, who we're going to call Devin, got accepted there also. So I was super excited that we did not have to do the long distance thing. Until a week later, he calls me. And apparently he got some soccer scholarship. So now he's going to Berkeley. So I was like, okay, maybe we can make long distance work. Well, then he tells me that he doesn't want to make it work and he thinks that we should just break up. Well, a week after that, him and I were sleeping together again. So I thought that meant that we were back together. The one day I was leaving his house and I heard his mom talking about me and she was like, oh, is she coming to the Christmas party? And I was super, super happy until Devin says, oh, we're not together anymore and I'm thinking of inviting a different girl. Well, a week later, the party rolls around and I decide that I'm going to show up anyways. Like for part two. Part two about my unhealthy obsession with my ex-boyfriend. So like I said, he thought that he was bringing some random girl to his Christmas party. And I decided that I was going to show up there anyways. So I'm sitting in the car outside of his house the day of the Christmas party. Pretty much just giving myself a little pep talk. Eventually I go up, I knock on the door, his dad answers, gives me a big hug. And tells me that he's downstairs with all of his cousins playing the video game. So I go downstairs and as soon as I get down the stairs, all of his cousins look at me. And they give me the look of like, oh shit, she is not supposed to be here right now. And then I see the the bathroom door closed with the light on so i walk over open the door and what do i see a girl from our school giving my boyfriend head well my ex-boyfriend but still he was my boyfriend so i didn't even give her time to get up before i started wailing on her a few punches and kicks later my boyfriend starts screaming in pain after that i got kicked out of the house and i had to pay some medical bills because she bit my boyfriend and i'm still on probation for beating her ass Story time about the girl who faked assault for attention. So a little background information. I was 15 and it was my sophomore year of high school. So we're going to call this girl Carly. Well, every week this girl would come in with some sort of bruise or cut on her. Me being a decent human being, I would ask her what happened. Well, every week she would either say that somebody beat her up or she was essayed. By this one guy who took a video of them while they were doing the nasty. But you could completely tell that it was not against her will. Well, everybody would believe her because always believe the victim. Well, the same thing happened again with a different boy. Everybody saw the video and I'm talking like people from different schools. So it got into a routine of her telling us how she would have to get abortions every month. So fast forward, I head to my first class of the day, which was English. Well, I look over at her because she sits right next to me and I see a huge bruise on her neck. Like it looked like somebody had been choking her. Now her and I weren't in the same friend group, but we were kind of friends. So I lean over and ask her what happened. Like for part two. Part two about the girl who faked assault for attention. So like I said, we were sitting in English class and I look over at her and she has this big bruise on her neck and it looked like somebody choked her. So I leaned over to her and I asked her what happened and she said the guy who was in the video with her, the most recent video, he essayed her. So I tell her to come to the bathroom with me before the bell rang. So we go in and I immediately grab a paper towel and put it under some water with some soap and I go to put it on her neck. And she starts screaming and like ducking and swerving. Well, I ended up swiping her neck with the paper towel. And there is makeup all on this paper towel. And the bruise is just like smudged all over her neck. So I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? She told me not to tell anyone. And that was her way of making friends. Even though this girl had plenty of friends. So when we got back to class, the bruise had a completely different shape. And she changed her story to me beating the shit out of her in the bathroom. Because she slept with my non-existent boyfriend. Three years later, she is still doing the same exact shit. Story time about the girl who was weirdly obsessed with my best friend. So a little background information. I was 14 and in ninth grade. And I went to a private school, so there was only one class per grade. So my best friend and I were in class together, and we're going to call her Bella. And then there was this girl, Gabby, who had kind of been friends with for almost a year. Well, Gabby was a whore for popularity. Like, anything that the popular kids would ask her to do, she would get on her hands and knees and do it. This woman did not care. Well, we had a project working up, so all three of us decided to work on it together. So I invited them over my house, and Gabby said that she needed to use the bathroom. So Bella offered to show her where the bathroom was. Probably three minutes later, Bella comes running up the stairs like she just saw a ghost. She was telling me that Gabby took all of her clothes off and tried making out with her. Well, that night they both spent the night and I wake up in the middle of the night to Gabby pinning Bella to the wall trying to kiss her. But I went back to sleep and acted like nothing ever happened. Fast forward, it got to the point where Bella was actually feeling really unsafe, so her parents switched her schools.
Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a party that was planned for me? Like most women, I'd spent years fantasizing about my wedding day. So when my fiance asked me to marry him last year, I was over the moon. Mm -hmm. I spent hundreds of hours planning and arranging our perfect day. Little did I know that my fiance and his best man had arranged a prank. So when it came down to anyone objecting the wedding, the best man stood up and says he objected. Anyone who knows anything about weddings knows that regardless if it was a joke or not, the wedding cannot go forward <gasps> if objected. So despite the best man and my fiance saying that it was a prank, we could not get married yesterday as intended. I was devastated as all that money was now out the window no. and non-refundable. Oh, no, 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 no. My was soon to be sister-in-law had arranged an after party at her place for us. Instead of me going, I walked down the aisle to the door by myself and took off from complete embarrassment and My mother-in-law has hated me since day one because I grew up in a single family household and she told my husband that he deserved to be with someone who came from a two-parent household. For four years, I bit my tongue trying to get her to like me. When we got engaged, she tried to dictate my whole wedding, not offering to pay for anything. When I decided I didn't want kids at the wedding, she flipped and told me I was selfish, that the wedding isn't for me, that I'm tearing her family apart and that I'm ruining her life. Day of the wedding, she causes a scene because my mom danced with me and my husband, stealing her spotlight. My husband and her get into a fight, he storms away, and then she pushes me. I push her off, and then she lunges at me, going for my throat. She's literally trying to choke me at my wedding. All because I try to grab my husband and say that this was not the time for a fight with his mom. She gets escorted out by security. Fast forward to now. She tries to communicate with my husband, and my husband ignores her. Now he wants her back in his life. I don't know what to do. This lady put her hands on me at our wedding. I tried explaining to my husband how much she's hurt me, and he says he understands, but that's his mom. I don't know if I should let my husband talk to her again because I don't want him to resent me. But she crossed so many boundaries and she doesn't see what she did wrong. And she refuses to apologize to me. Story time about the guy who pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So we're going to go ahead and call him Danny. And at the time I knew of Danny, but I didn't really know him. We weren't friends or nothing like that. Danny was known as the gay guy. He would always have his makeup done and he would hang out with some of the girls. Everything was fine and cool until we entered our junior year and Danny came out as transgender. He started wearing wigs and dressing more feminine-like. Now, when he would get dressed up, he would look completely different than what he looked like as his, you know, born male self. You would think that he was a different person when he would get dressed up. Well, one particular day, he didn't get dressed up and he entered the girls' bathroom. When he did that, all of a sudden, it was a big group of girls running out of the bathroom screaming. If you guys want to know why they ran out, come back for part two. This is part two of the guy that pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So, like I said before, junior year was the year Danny came out as transgender. Some days he'd get dressed up, some days he didn't. When he entered the girl's bathroom, a group of girls ran out of the bathroom screaming. I think maybe a couple hours later after lunch, Danny was called to the office and rumors went around about Danny trying to look through the girl's stalls. One girl claimed that he was peeking through the stall to look at one of her friends and Danny was suspended. I think two weeks later, Danny came back to school and she completely stopped wearing feminine type outfits. That same week, me and my friend Kenneth were walking past the boys' bathroom and we heard a lot of fumbling going on. I told him to go check what was going on. When he checked, there was a group of guys in the bathroom jumping Danny. I'm running out of time. Come back for part three. Part three of the guy that pretended to be transgender to get into the girl's bathroom. So, like I said earlier, Danny was in the bathroom and he was getting jumped by a group of guys. After it was over, he walked out last and he walked over to his locker. So, I followed him to see if he was okay and he had a black eye and his lip was busted. I asked him if he wanted me to walk him to the nurse, and why did they even jump him? Danny replied, the guy said I'm not allowed into their bathrooms anymore. He said anytime he ever entered there, he'd get bullied or teased for being gay. Then I asked him, I thought you were transgender. He said he said that because he didn't want to go into the guy's bathrooms anymore. I said, what about the incident about you peeking through the girl's stalls? He said, I never looked through any other girl's stall. I was just seeing to see who was in the bathroom so I could go in. He said, I'm gay. I don't even like girls. And it wasn't my intentions to make anyone uncomfortable. There was a girl named Jessica Phillips that went missing in my high school. She went missing in the middle of our junior year. When her parents came out about it, the school put posters up everywhere. Alerts on the news. Two weeks later, they decorated her locker. Ever so often, I see her closest friend weeping during class and the teachers would excuse them out. The devotion of love she was getting after she went missing was outstanding. But the thing is, no one liked Jessica. 
Actually, everyone hated her. Don't get me wrong, she was the most popular girl in school, but she was an asshole. She was very nasty and rude and did anything to get what she wanted. I heard she once gave this boy Ronnie peanuts for not doing her homework anymore. He wanted to get into sports and didn't have time for it, and he was allergic to peanuts. The girl was practically a bully. Her friends were all followers that secretly hated her but wanted to be her. But it's crazy to see them all crying over her whereabouts when they all wanted her gone. But I know why she went missing. Come back for part two. Jessica going missing didn't faze me. Actually, the days felt lighter when she wasn't there. Yeah, she was the talk of the town for weeks, but I'd rather that than to actually see her. And I know some might say I'm heartless, but Jessica did it to herself. So the night of Nicole's birthday party is when it all started. Nicole and Jessica were like frenemies. I mean, they were friends, but they were always in competition with each other. I'd say Nicole was the second popular girl in school. She was the first, but she dropped to second because she lost her boyfriend, Luke, to Jessica. He cheated on her with Jessica. I can say that's when the war started. Anyways, the night of Nicole's party, Jessica wasn't invited. I remember overhearing her during lunch that she was going to plan to crash and ruin Nicole's party. Pretty devious if you ask me. So the night come and I go to Nicole's party. An hour goes by and I take a step outside of the side of the house to get some fresh air. I see Jessica creeping from the back. I say, Jessica, is that you? She looks at me and before I know when someone grabs her face and pulls her into the bushes. So the night Jessica went missing, I saw exactly what happened. She tried to sneak into Nicole's party, but she actually didn't get in. Not only because she wasn't invited, but she had got pulled into the bushes. When I ran to see where she was pulled, she was dragged by two guys into the streets. I was in shock and I stood there for a few seconds, but those few seconds, Jessica saw me. She screamed for me to help her, but I just stood there. He threw her into a car and drove off. I went back to the party as though nothing happened. After the party was over, I went back home and I kept replaying what happened over and over. Then that next Wednesday is when everyone started hearing about Jessica going missing. They said if anyone ever saw anything to come forward, but I decided not to. There were moments throughout the week where I felt like I should say something, but there were times that I felt like it was too late. I thought maybe she was dead by now and it'd be pointless for me to come out now. But everything changed when I got a message from a block number saying, why didn't you save me? Story time on how I found out my friend was homeless and at the time we were both 11. And let's call her Leah because I don't want to expose her real identity. Me and Aaliyah were really close. She always wanted to come over my house. My family liked her around because she was like another daughter. My mom loved the fact that she ate her cooking, and also I was the only girl. I had three other siblings that were all boys, so Aaliyah was basically my sister. Anytime I'd go outside, Aaliyah was always outside, so always had someone to play with. But one thing um, I will say is that she smelled funky, but I ignored it because she was a really nice person. Anyways, my birthday came up, and I wanted to have a sleepover. My mom said she needed to talk to everyone's parents to make sure if they were allowed to sleep over. My mom talked to everyone's mom besides Aaliyah. I asked Aaliyah if her mom could speak to my mom, but she said she didn't need permission to sleep over. I was like, you're lying. Where do you live? And she's like, never mind. I probably can't. I'm going to just go home. I was like, go home. And she was like, yes, I got to go. When she left, I secretly followed her home. She walked for about 20 minutes until she came to a stop and went into a tent by a tree. I'll be back with the next part in part two. Part two on how I found out my friend was homeless and at the time we were both 11. So like I said earlier, I followed her home for about 20 minutes until she came to a stop and went into a tent by a tree. I was so confused because she told me she was going home. Why lie? So I went closer to the tent and shook it and then went around to open it. When I opened it, she had canned food piled in the corner with a blanket down the bottom. She had a lot of things packed into her little old tent. I asked, what's going on? Are you going camping? She looked down and said, this is where I live. I was like, how does your family live in here? And she cried and explained that it was just her. Come to find out, she was a foster, but she ran away from home because her foster mom would bring in strange men around her and the rest of the girls that lived in the house with her. I'm not going into full details about what happened because I don't want to put too much of her business out there, but she was touched. It took a couple days for her to come out and tell me about it. She begged me not to tell anyone where she lives because she didn't want to get sent back. But I didn't feel right knowing that she lived in that tent. Come back for part three. Part three on how I found out my friend was homeless. And at the time, we were both 11. So I found out she was living in a tent due to her not liking the treatment she was getting by her foster parent. She told me not to tell anyone where she lived because she didn't want to go back. But I didn't feel okay knowing that she lived in that tent. So a week later, I went and told my mom everything she told me and I was hoping she could help. I suggested to my mom maybe we could adopt her, but my mom wasn't too fond of the idea, so she called this hotline. 
I forgot the name, but they supposedly helped with stuff like this. She told them everything I told her, and I also spoke to them myself. Then maybe the next morning, they came into my house, and they wanted me to direct where Aaliyah was living. They found her and took her in. I was so happy that she was going to get the help she needed, but two months later, I didn't see nor hear from her. I asked my mom if she could call the hotline people, but she said she would, but she never did. Then maybe two to three weeks later, I see Aaliyah outside, and I get excited and run to her, and when I get closer, she had a black eye. I was like, what happened? And she said, you, and walked away. After that day, I never saw her again. When I was younger, I grew up with a cut on my face. It went down from my cheekbone all the way down to my neck. It was very long, the longest cut anyone has ever seen. When I was in school, teachers and students would ask, how did I get that cut or if it still hurt? I would tell them it didn't hurt, but I didn't know where the cut came from. My mom actually told me I was born with it. Some teachers would say, that doesn't look like a cut you were born with. I think when I got a little older to understand, I asked my mom again, how did I get this cut on my face? She'd say, as usual, you were born with it. But I don't know, I just had a feeling there was something she wasn't telling me. If I could, I asked my dad, but my mom told me that he passed away a couple weeks after I was born. When I turned 18, I finally went to the dermatologist to see what was up with this cut. They told me the cut looked as though someone cut me with a sharp object. Later that week, I went to my aunt house and told her about my dermatology visit. She broke down in tears and started apologizing. Come back for part two. So after going to the dermatologist about the cut I had on my face my entire life, I went to my aunt about it and she broke down and cried. She apologized and told me that I needed to speak to my mom. She said she thought it would be best if she told me. So I went home a bit confused and I talked to my mom. I told her the dermatologist told me the cut on my face wasn't from something I was born with. My mom looked at me and said, I never told you because I didn't want you to feel bad about this, this family, your father. But when you were three weeks old, your dad did this to you. I said, what? What do you mean? He did this to me? Why? She replied, your dad was really sick. I cried and asked, why would he do this? She looked at me and said that he tried to get rid of you. We couldn't afford to take care of you. But I pushed him off of you before he could have did anything. She said my aunt had called the police. My mom and dad were fighting and they shot him and he died that day. I was once working at a fast food restaurant. Working there stopped me from eating from this place ever again. It's everyone's favorite spot to get burgers and fries and it seems like no matter what people tell you, people still continue to eat because how cheap it is. But let's start with the customers. Always be nice to your servers because I had a couple of co-workers that would take the burger meat, rub it onto the floor and serve it to the customers that came off rude. The restaurant had mice, and if they found something, they got to it. There was a particular day where I accidentally left out the burger buns, and the mice, of course, got to them. On my way to toss them into the trash, my manager stops me and says, we're low on stock for the burger buns. We need to keep those. And they were served to multiple families. There's way more dangerous things that went down, but if you guys want me to disclose everyone's favorite restaurant, let me know down below if I should make a part. Part two of the most disgusting fast food restaurant I've ever worked for. And here's a couple of things I think you should know. The hiring process is super easy. You literally just gotta be 16. Okay, so back to the food. When it came to preparing food, the guys in the back that will prepare the food would never change their gloves. They would go from touching doors, cleaning things, to back to preparing food again. I'm pretty sure most of the food they made was contaminated. Our manager was the worst. She loved the food they had and sometimes would pick up a batch of fries with her bare hands and would just eat as she worked. Half the time when she got done with counting money, she wouldn't wash her hands neither. And y'all know how dirty money is. Now exposing the restaurant. I said if you guys comment down below, I might just tell you guys what fast food restaurant it was. But if this TikTok blows up, I do not want to get sued. Just know they make burger fries and they're the most popular fast food restaurant in the world. I need your love
toxic ex-best friend got me jumped by the way we're calling her alexis so me and alexis have been friends since we were babies our moms were best friends and they sent us to the same school had the same friends and everything but the thing with alexis is that she was super jealous and insecure whenever i did anything without her she get very controlling we got to high school we started to drift apart and i made new friends but like after school she'd always tell me that she didn't like my friends and that i'd be better off finding prettier friends i would tell her yeah they might not be the most prettiest but i like them one day when i go to school all of my friends are ignoring me and are giving me dirty looks when i go to lunch one of the most annoying boys walks up to me and tells me there's a rumor going around saying i was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school if you want to know what happened after that let me know down below this is part two of my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So, like I said before, this kid comes up to me telling me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. And in my head, I'm like, so that's why nobody's talking to me? So, I went to my best friend at the time, which started the whole mess, and I didn't know. I asked her if she heard anything about this going around, about them wanting to jump me after school. She laughs at me and says, I should have kept my mouth shut. I get completely irritated because it's like now I don't have her support after school comes and everybody quickly runs outside. Me, I'm stalling. I'm very slow at my locker. When I come outside, all of my friends are lined up and everyone gathered to see what's about to go down. I'm running out of time. Y'all let me know down below in the comments if y'all want a part three. This is part three from my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So like I said, I walk outside and everyone is gathered around. I walk up to one of them saying, all oh, the rumors that they heard aren't true. One of my friends said, you know what you said and pulled into my hair. And at that moment, I tried to swing back, but I just get jumped on. And they literally jumped me. After the whole thing was over, my best friend Alexis helped me. We went to her house and she cleaned me up and said that those girls were fake and that I should have listened to her earlier about not being friends with them. And I was confused on why she was helping me because she laughed in my face when I asked about it. But I left it alone because at least she was helping me and maybe she was right. Fast forward two weeks later, one of my friends who jumped me reached out to me apologizing. I asked her why and who even told you I was talking badly about you. Guys, believe it or not, after I get done speaking with her, I found out that my best friend Alexis lied and told them I was talking badly about them. And the girl even sent fake screenshots of messages between me and her. Story time of how I got caught cheating on my boyfriend with his brother. So me and my boyfriend at the time were on and off. Our relationship was really toxic and I was tired of the whole relationship. And everything started to go downhill when he cheated on me and I took him back. I know, stupid. But I really wanted us to work, so I stayed with him. But throughout the relationship, I was very insecure. I constantly thought he was cheating on me, so I started talking to other guys. One of them being his brother. And his brother was the biggest player of them all, but I didn't care as long as I wasn't stressed about what my boyfriend was doing. So one day after school, I meet up with his brother at his house and we got it on. I thought that day he had football practice, but no, he came straight home and walked in on us. If y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part two of how I got caught cheating on my boyfriend with his brother. So, like I said earlier, I go to their house to go see his brother, and we got it on. And that day, I really thought he had football practice. But no, he came straight home and walked in on us. When he came in, he grabbed the covers off of us, and he literally starts fighting his brother. Then, comes over to me and drags me into the hallway, throws all my clothes at me, calling me all types of names, and telling me to get the hell out. He then ran and stormed out of the house. And to be honest, the whole time, I wasn't even mad. I was glad he caught me cheating on him. Finally gave him a taste of his own medicine. One day, I got my period during school, so I had to go to the bathroom during class. So I make it to the bathroom, and then I see this girl that I've never seen before. She was just looking at herself in the mirror, and I, I've never seen her. She looked really pale and like a ghost bitch, basically. Like a bit. 
that's it. And at first I was like, okay, whatever. Like maybe she just, you know, needs some sun. But then I decided, why don't I go say hi to her? Like maybe we can be friends. And then I tap her on the shoulder and I'm like, hi. Next thing I know, after I said hi to this random girl I've never seen, I'm on the floor with the school nurse. And then I get up and I was like, what happened? And then the school nurse tells me that I fainted. The school nurse then proceeds to ask me like, what happened? Why did you faint? Like, were you feeling weird? Is that why you went to the bathroom? And I told her, no, like I came to the bathroom because I got my period, but I said hi to this random girl. And that's all I remember. And we decided to take it further to my principal because they were like, what if this girl like punched her or something? Long story short, we found out that this girl that I saw does not go to the school. She doesn't exist. We looked through all the yearbooks. No one looked like the girl that I saw. So my principal ended up telling me, I think you need a break, you need to disconnect, you need to go on vacation because you're going crazy. Basically, ha! <laughs> it does not end here. So I was looking for something that would make me relax or whatever, and then I found Breakaway Beach. This is the best pop. It's basically one of the largest travel student companies in North America. They're taking thousands of travelers annually across the world. Their goal is to provide an amazing senior trip for seniors. So if you're graduating high school next year, class of 2022 i recommend breakaway beach it saved my life so let's to this summer camp each time before bed which was like 12 our chaperone would come in to check like if we're sleeping one night my friends and i were blasting music and you know dancing so act up came up you know like city girls so you know i started twerking throwing it back innocently innocent i don't have an ass so then i remember seeing like a flashlight spotlight go on me and i was like eh, throw the dollar bills bleh. and all of a sudden the music stops so I was like, oh, they're probably gonna change it to like some cumbia, you know what, a Latina. No, no, that's no, no cumbia, no. I turn with my ass stuck out so I look like the letter C. So I turn around and it's my friend's dad. He was a chaperone, so he had to tuck us in. And we were just staring at each other in the eyes. So do I look away? So when I turned 13, I had a birthday party. It's no big deal. I mean, you know, I was just blossoming, turning into a woman. Eh! And so I remember my mom was like, no one's allowed in the rooms. Everyone needs to be outside. If you see anyone inside, you need to tell me. I was like, oh my God, Booma, you don't need to pop off. I get it, Booma, come on. <laughs> I remember I saw three adults walk out of my room. I, I didn't tell my mom, but let me tell you why. Because I was like, maybe they're designing a gift for me. So the end of the day came, no surprise present came. I'm not mad, are you mad? Because I'm happy. <laughs> So we started cleaning up and then we went to go clean my room in case. Oh, the best part is coming! <laughs> there was a voodoo doll under my bed. You know, it looked exactly like me. I remember there was one needle on its left eye, another needle on its heart, and it was laying on like a ratchet green leaf. And then next to it, there was a note that said, this is all gonna be mine in cursive. So then my mom started doing research on this after we found the voodoo doll, my mom did some research and we found out that someone was basically trying to do evil to me and harm me. Like, you know, I appreciate you counting me in. I personally, personally, I don't want to be voodooed, but thank you. Thankfully, though, we had some cameras in the house, so we were about to see who was behind this. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> we checked the cameras and the three people that I saw walk out of my room, um, you know, they were strangers. My parents didn't invite them. They didn't know them. <laughs> So what my dad did was he screenshotted the footage and then he posted it on Facebook and he was like, does anyone know who this is? So we ended up finding them, contacting them, whatever. <laughs> and we found out they work for this company that does witch stuff. And you know, someone was paying them to do all of this witchery stuff on me. <laughs> no, I'm fine. What about you? <laughs> so we asked them, what is behind all of this? What magic are you trying to do? Who paid you? After my dad contacted the witches, the witches basically told him that it's better to not talk about this on the phone. They then told my dad that the only person they can release information to is me. Long story short, I had to meet the witches at an alley by myself. <laughs> by myself. 
I pull up, I feel like a whole ass horse. I'm about to shit everywhere. It's so then I come across the witches and I remember they were looking straight at the ground. And I remember I was like, hi. And they were like, we cannot look you in the eyes because then the curse is going to be ours. And I remember I started asking them questions like, you know, just the usual, like, why'd you make a voodoo doll of me? <laughs> they told me that the whole point behind this was for me to eventually turn crazy and be lonely forever. <laughs> Bitch, I'm already crazy and needy as f Unfortunately, they said they couldn't tell me who was behind all of this. I remember they told me how to break the curse though. <laughs> they told me to put the voodoo doll in a wooden box and set it on fire. And they gave me this like nasty hot green juice, but apparently it killed the curse. When I was in seventh grade, my friend and I went to my brother's high school football game. We're gonna call her Shakira. So like halfway into the game, these two really hot guys walked up to us, bitch. Dude, I remember they whispered and they were like, meet us under the bleachers in 10 minutes. Y'all are cute as fuck, let's talk. <laughs> Of course we went. We're just like prepubescent. We're rebellious. I don't know what it's- Well, Shakira and I go to the bleachers and we see the two cute guys. I remember the guys were like, hey, like put these blindfolds on. We're gonna go somewhere. It's gonna be cute. So my dumbass put the blindfold on. Um, I remember one of the guys were like, take off the mask real quick. Hold up. So like I take off the mask and straight ahead is my brother filming me. And he's like, this was a test. I'm gonna show mom and dad. <laughs> so there was this guy that I was talking to. We're gonna call him- Ryan! One day Ryan texts me, he's like, my mom's out of town, I got the car, like, I could go out, do you want to go on a date? Uh, long story short, Ryan and I end up at the mall, and we're just walking around. Oh, well, I didn't know where, I hear this lady behind us, like, Ryan! Hey, Ryan! Oh, so I look at Ryan, at this point, homie Ryan is hanging by a fucking thread. Oh, so the lady gets closer, Ryan's like, mom, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> this is the best part! Ryan straight up points at me. And he's like, she told me if I didn't bring her to the mall, she would take you away. So one day, this random guy added me on Snapchat. I added him just because, just because. You really never know. It could be my soulmate or something. Like, you know. We're gonna call him motherfucking Larry. So right when I added Larry, he sent me a snap. Oh, this? This is the best part. Just wait, sweetie. So it was a photo of a wall with pictures of me, baby pictures of me, even a picture of my cat with like tiny post-its all around it. And in the caption, he was like, I manifested you, you cannot leave anymore. I was kind of scared, so I, um, you know, I blocked him. And I remember I left my grandma's house because I was just really scared to even be in my own house. And so the next morning of me staying at my grandma's house, we got mailed this like big box with like confetti in it. And there was this envelope and I remember the envelope was like, hey, it's Larry. I told you you cannot leave. And my family's number was there, our address was there, and a bottle of pepper spray. me a box with not only a letter saying that I cannot leave him the letter also has my family's numbers my address and well after receiving this lovely package I mean it's what else could you ask for I decided to ask my grandma's neighbors like did you see anyone drop off this box anything I'll take anything at this point they all said no so I was like okay you know what whatever I'm just gonna sleep on it tonight maybe this Larry person just tweaked out a little bit you know what happens to all of us whatever oh I was so wrong okay so guess what happened the next morning we get a letter from Larry! So this time the letter's like, you cannot escape me, I will follow you everywhere. And so I was like, bet. So I know this guy who's really good at hacking people. I told him about my situation and he agreed to help me. Long story short, I unblocked Larry, sent him a snap with his full name, his number, everything. And I was like, so wanna follow me? I remember that time when my cousin literally got catfished. Dead ass, he thought he was meeting up with Madison Bia, but all he met up with, all we met up with was a grandma. I don't like I don't really know where the Madison Bia is, but okay. Ever since that little, you know, monstrosity, scary situation. I was so terrified to use apps to make online friends and meet people. But I remember one day I woke up and I was like, fuck it. So I decided to try out the app Wink. 
Oh, this is the best part. This is the best part. Every person that I've met on that app is legit. I literally have so many new FaceTime buddies and stuff. Boredom from quarantine? Feeling lonely? No, 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 no. We don't know her. Bye. So in middle school, not only was I pale as fuck, I also had a crush on this kid. We're gonna call him Eduardo. So every lunch and brunch, he would always give me a big hug. And every time he would hug me, I'd be like, get closer, kiss me already, oh my god, <laughs> ask me out. So one day, my nasty, stinky ass is coming back from getting my lunch. And then Eduardo comes and he hugs me. And then I swear, I swear to god, he whispers in my ear, do you want to go out? I was about to shit myself, but other than that, I looked at him and I was like, and then I ran away and then I consulted my friend and I was like, dude, Eduardo just asked me, he asked me out. I wasn't allowed today. But after talking to my friend, I was like, I'm gonna risk it all. So I told my friend to tell him that I'm ready to be a shoddy. <laughs> and you know what he says? He's like, ew, no, I, I never asked her out. You know, he was playing hard to get. I was like, oh, you don't need to play this act. Like, oh my. Ill you. Ill you. Okay, story time. <laughs> so I work in a jewelry store, and today a man came in looking for a gift for his wife for their 10th year anniversary. He ended up picking out a piece that said, my beautiful wife. And I said, anything else for you today? And he said, no, that's it for her, but I do want to make another purchase using a separate credit card. And could you possibly create a different account for me? And I said, sure, what are you looking for? And he said, do you have anything that says girlfriend? And I said, yes. And he said, perfect, I'll take it. And do you have anything that says happy one year anniversary to go with it? And I said, Yes. And he said, perfect, I'll take it. So I boxed everything up all nice and I put them in their respected bags. He had me mark a K for Kristen on the bottom of his wife's bag and an L for Laura on the bottom of his girlfriend's bag. I put pretty bows on them. I handed it to him. I said, they're going to love it. Have a nice day. And he said, thank you. And shit, I just remembered that his wife's name is Laura and his girlfriend's name is Kristen. I must have mixed up the bag. This is why when something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Once a newly married couple was searching for houses they could buy, and they came across a beautiful house with a suspiciously cheap price. They couldn't see anything wrong with the house, so they just thought they got lucky. They moved in quickly. But one day, the husband was walking down the hallway when he found a red crayon on the floor. He thought maybe the previous residents had left it behind, so he just threw it out. The next day, he found another red crayon lying in the exact same place. This time, he asked his wife about it. His wife looked shocked. She confessed that every day since they've moved in, she's been finding red crayons in the hallway too. Then the husband tried to tap on the wall at the end of the hallway and heard a hollow sound. He began peeling off the wallpaper and found a sliding door behind it. It was as if someone had tried everything they could to keep anyone from finding this door. He tried to open it, but the door was nailed shut. Then he took a hammer and pried off the nails one by one. He opened the door to find a small room with words scribbled in red crayon all over the walls. It said, mommy, I'm sorry, let me out over and over. This is why you should always lock your front doors. A kid living with both of his parents decided to watch a movie for their family weekly movie night. He then gets up to use the restroom. As he is in the restroom, he sees all of the power in the house cuts off. And then he hears two loud thumbs. He locks the bathroom door and hears heavy objects being dragged across the hallway. The kid freaking out runs out of the bathroom and runs into the restroom. Once he is inside the room, he locks the door. As he locks the door, he jumps in bed and acts like he's asleep and hopes that this person who is in the house will ignore a child sleeping. He closes his eyes and hears the door creek at the same time. He squints his eyes and sees a man with no eyes dragging the bodies of both of his parents. The man dragging his parents sits his mom's dead body in a chair facing him and then sets the dad's body on the floor facing up. It was almost like whoever was in the house who killed them wanted him to see it. He then sees the man writing something on the wall and then climbs under his bed. He laid there for hours knowing that if he moved a muscle he would end up just like his parents. He finally built up enough courage to read the wall and the writing on the